This is the story of how I died. Don't worry, I survived. Now that my obligatory Tangled reference is out of the way. Hi YouTube, it's Jambi here. So I've talked about this quite a bit on the channel so far, but I feel like I'm at a place where I can tell the whole story now. And yeah, I'm doing this game theory PowerPoint presentation style because I think it's a better way for me to tell the story. So the story actually begins in September last year when I went to see my pain specialist and he prescribed me a drug called carbamazepine, or Tegretol, I think is the brand name. Carbamazepine is an anticonvulsant drug that is also used to treat trigeminal neuralgia, which I have. Carbamazepine has a pretty long list of side effects and my doctor didn't tell me about any of them. My GP did when I complained about a permanent bad taste in my mouth. I also showed him a rash I'd developed, but he said it didn't look too serious and told me that my pain specialist had told him to increase my dose. The drug wasn't making any of the pain go away and I hated the gross mouthfeel, so I didn't increase my dose. Thank goodness. Let's fast forward to October. I've been on the drug for a month now and all my doctors are telling me to keep taking it. I am in debilitating pain all the time so I can't remember what day it is, let alone what I'm doing. But I recognise that I've started to feel sick. It's a bit late in the year for the flu, but I take my temperature and sure enough, it's 39.5 degrees Celsius or 103.1 Fahrenheit for the Americans here. So I call in sick from work that week. But I go back to work the next week because I'm casual and I don't have sick leave. But eventually I start feeling worse. The rash on my body has gotten a lot worse. So I call in sick and go to the doctor. I can't get in to see my usual GP. So I see another person at the same practice. She tells me to take it easy, but that I need to keep an eye on this rash because it looks a bit like rubella or German measles. Now, ever since I went on my Graves disease medication a few years ago, I no longer know if any of my old vaccines work. There is a test you can do but it's long and hard to book and I just haven't done it. But that means that there was a very real chance that it was rubella even though I have been vaccinated. So I made an appointment to see the same doctor tomorrow. My mum volunteered to take me to the next appointment because I was losing my mobility even more than usual and I pretty much slept the entire 24 hours between appointments. I couldn't hold down any food or drink and by the time I got to the next appointment I hadn't eaten or drank anything in three days. In the appointment, it was my mum who pointed out that it might be the carbamazepine, but rubella was still the number one possibility, so they sent me directly to hospital. I really wanted to just go home and pack a bag of stuff, like my laptop or blankets or some clean pyjamas that I hadn't been wearing for three days straight, but mum and the doctor insisted that we just go straight there. So mum dropped me off and went to find a parking space and I walked up to the emergency department triage nurse and gave her the letter from my doctor. So you know how in the emergency room they do the triage thing where you get seen in order of how urgent things are? I was sitting right in front of the sign that said we may see a person who arrived after you before you because they are in need of urgent medical attention or something like that. I called my dad and told him where I was but I was settling in to spend a few hours in the triage area. RPA is a very busy hospital in Sydney that sees a lot of serious cases, so I was ready to be there for hours. When they called me in, I'd been seated for two minutes. This was the point where it got through to my foggy, sick brain. Oh, shit, I might die. But I still wasn't well enough to really process what was happening. My mum came in and found me while I was still on the seat that they put me in to do a blood test. And because I was so dehydrated, it took a few attempts to find my vein. They had to call in this nurse who was supposedly really good at it and he was really attractive, which is super rude because I had literally never looked worse. Eventually a bed cleared up for me, but by that point my fever was down to 40 degrees Celsius or 104 Fahrenheit and my organs were going to start shutting down if they didn't get my fever under control. So they couldn't wait for the blood test results. My dad came and went because he had to catch a plane the next day. My mom stayed with me, and it's really important to point out that everyone still thought I had rubella at this point. So they gave me intravenous paracetamol to bring the fever down. 
If I'd had rubella, this would have been the best thing to do, and with the information they had, it was the best choice. It also killed me. So here's the thing about carbamazepine. It's metabolized in the liver, and paracetamol, which is the safest painkiller, is also metabolized in the liver. And what none of us knew yet was that the carbamazepine was causing my liver to fail, and the sudden flood of intravenous paracetamol caused it to go into shock and stop working. And that shock went through my entire body. For a hot minute, my heart stopped. The heart machine made that annoying long beep noise that called people over to me. I don't really remember this because my brain stopped sending signals to anything for a minute and everything just stopped. It was like being asleep, I guess. I wasn't aware of anything that was happening around me and even now it's like, all of this happened to someone else. Then the doctors gave me some IV adrenaline to start my heart again, and I was brought back to painful awareness. I was alive. I stayed in RPA for the next few days, had a liver ultrasound, was dry- diagnosed with drug-induced hepatitis, which is fancy speak for drugs nuked my liver, and now I have to bring it back to life. I wasn't allowed to drink or take paracetamol for two months, and I watched Good Omens about 600 times from my hospital bed. So yeah, um, that is the story of how I died, how I became a ghost possessing my own zombie body. I'm really grateful for the support and love my friends gave me while I've been coming to terms with all this. As you can probably tell from how unemotional I've been while talking about this, I still have to process my feelings about what happened in therapy. Also, my mom, who was the first person to arrive when visiting hours began and the last person to leave every day when I was in there, it can't have been easy to watch your child die. And most of all, I would like to give a huge shout out to Medicare, because here in Australia, I stayed in hospital for ages, had life-saving drugs administered, and it didn't cost me a single cent. So I hope you get there soon, America, I guess. Thank you all for watching. Jambi out.